Domination, perfect adjective to describe Oklahoma's 35-19 win over the Auburn Tigers in the Sugar Bowl on Monday night. And yeah, if you're a Sooner fan, you wish that the month of September did not occur. Only two games that Oklahoma lost were in that month. But rather than feel sorry for themselves, rather than just going through the motions and facing two, maybe three more losses along the line, Sooners had a players only meeting and decided how they were going to finish their season. They finished it with a Big 12 championship, a major bowl win, and a 10-game winning streak, and most likely a top-five finish once the final polls are released next week. And you're talking about a matchup like this. You're talking about having to be physical, happen to be diverse, and defensively holding your own. And I'm going to be honest with you, okay? After the first 12 minutes of this game, did you think the Oklahoma Sooners were going to be able to win this game convincingly? I didn't. No way. Matter of fact, I was concerned because Auburn was dictating how this game we thought was going to go. I mean, the opening drive for the Tigers, they pummeled Oklahoma's defensive line. It's that simple. And they were running multiple formations, which the Sooners knew that Auburn would do. So it's not just as simple as lining up four players on that defensive line and saying, okay, we're going to stop the run. Okay, the Sooners at times were out of position, and quite frankly at times, like I mentioned, just getting out physical up front. And boy, I want to tell you one thing. You know, Cameron Petway is one heck of a player. Incredibly strong. Give him a little bit of a crease, and he makes things happen. And that opening drive, Auburn made plenty of things happen to take the uh, 7 nothing lead. And, you know, early on, Oklahoma wasn't depending on their ground attack, but rather going exclusively throwing and that really didn't work out. As a matter of fact, we didn't see Joe Mixon until late in the first quarter. Of course, Mixon was one of the big headliners entering the Sugar Bowl, but not for the right reasons. Of course, the videotape that came out, you know, of this um, of the uh, the hit on Emilia Molitor at Picklemans two years ago. That video was finally made available to the public December sixteenth, and you know, some thought this could be a distraction for the Sooners, okay, and especially for uh, Joe Mixon. But as far as athletic achievement, you can't argue with the positive results that Mixon's had for this team. And I think Mixon, to be quite frankly honest with you, was maybe the difference maker in the game because Auburn was able to handle the Sooner offense uh, for the most part in the first quarter. But, you know, once Mixon came in for P. Ryan, we saw Joe Mixon really become a matchup problem for the Auburn defense. And the one thing that you have to admit that when you watch Mixon play, it's not just his – burst of speed. It's not just his you know, lower and upper body strength and the fact that he can break a big one at any time. He's very football smart. I mean, he can spot the open creases. He can spot those holes and he can shift laterally so very well. And that's a big, big thing to have for a running back to have that presence, to have the part of your game that really can't be coached. It's just instincts. And he was able to, you know, whether it was catching the ball or running it, able to hurt Auburn with his overall ability and his football IQ on the field. And there's no doubt that Auburn had a hard time stopping him the entire night. So I thought Mixon was an X factor. And we can talk about, you know, the other X factor to me um, with nominations going to, you know, Lincoln Riley and his play calling, which was sharp. Also to the supporting cast of receivers, you know, like Mark Andrews with another touchdown three receptions for the game, and, you know, Jeffrey Meade, who had a strong first half, and Geno Lewis, who had a strong second half to pick up the slack, because let's face it, D.D. Westbrook tonight only had four catches, and you give Auburn credit for um, being able to limit him, even though uh, Westbrook had a critical fourth down catch with OU driving down three points, and the fact that, that Westbrook got open near the sideline, made the catch, stayed in bounds, and that led to first and goal, and, and Mixon scored, and OU retook the lead or took the lead for the first time at 14-10 to 10 and never, ever trailed again. I can mention all those things to you, but offensively, it was Baker Mayfield that made the difference. And we know this because you watch the game, and in the early going, Auburn was able to get close to Mayfield, collapse that pocket, and make Mayfield throw early, or make Mayfield get out of the pocket. And basically, you know, Mayfield, we, we've seen it throughout his career, you know, he does good at improvising. And, and trust me, he had to rely um, on his own quickness. He had to rely on his footwork to avoid Auburn pressure from collapsing on him. So early on, when Auburn was having um, more success penetrating uh, than they would later in the game, as far as trying to get to Mayfield, 
Baker was able to avoid mistakes, avoid the sacks, and avoid turnovers. And then as the game progressed and Mayfield had more time to throw, he was able to then dissect Auburn of 19 of 28 passing, no interceptions, nearly 300 yards throwing, and two touchdowns. So I thought Baker Mayfield might have been the biggest X factor on the field for the Sooners offense. And by the way, red zone. Sooners, first five drives inside the Auburn 20. One of the big fortes of Auburn's defense, besides just being so damn good, is limiting opponents to three or no points once an opponent drives inside their 20. How about this? First five drives for Oklahoma inside Auburn's 20. All five resulted into touchdowns. So though you took advantage of those drives and were able to drive the length of the field at times and cap it off with touchdowns and not come away with empty-handed possessions or with uh, field goals. They got the touchdowns, and you commend Lincoln Riley and the staff for doing that. Um, another thing to talk about, of course, is the defense for the Sooners, which in the beginning, like I said, they were getting driven back by the Auburn offensive line. Um, you know, Cameron Petway, he's coming back next year for Auburn. I know that makes Tiger fans real happy. Um, and early on, it looked like Auburn was going to be able to um, supply their will at running a slow, steady diet to Petway and at times have Sean White do the job. Um, the defensive line for OU, other than the first quarter, I thought did one hell of a job, you know, with Jordan Wade, you know, with Matt Romar, um, and then, of course, the linebackers who ended up really picking up the slack, too, you know, with Oboe and with, uh, you know, Jordan playing his final game, Jordan Evans at linebacker, and then Caleb Kelly, to me, was probably the biggest surprise. Caleb Kelly... The true freshman, the five-star recruit from California, got into that Auburn backfield and was able to, you know, force Auburn at times to maybe throw a little earlier than they would have liked. I thought Caleb Kelly had his best game of the year. He got the start at outside linebacker, did a good job. And the safeties for the Sooners. Talking about Stephen Parker and Ahmad Thomas. Look, when you're playing Auburn, you know you're going to get a lot of rushing to deal with. And the safeties had to come up and try to limit – Auburn's rushing attack, and at times we saw um, Ahmad Thomas being able to supply good hits, and of course Stephen Parker, who is coming back next year for the Sooners, played a good game too. Um, the big thing for the Sooners in a game like this was, you know, in, in the early going, it didn't look good for that defense because they were out of position, they were getting dominated, but once they settled down, once they were able to make adjustments, then the Sooner defense um, from the second quarter onward, I thought, played much better and in the second half really, really took Auburn out of their game. And you really feel for the Tigers, you know, because in their defense, had some quarterback issues to deal with um, as far as injuries. Sean White, um, he's not really done a good job this year in trying to stay healthy. And tonight, um, according to his dad, broke his arm during the game. Daniel Franklin the third, who is a better athlete than White, but is not the thrower that Sean White is. And you could tell that was a problem. And even Franklin got hurt. So Jeremy Johnson. The third string QB had to play the entire fourth quarter uh, for the Tigers. He did lead Auburn to a touchdown, but that was the last possession of the game, in which at that time the score was 35 13 Sooners. So you commend the Sooners uh, for making the adjustments, for playing more physical in the second half. And I'm going to tell you one thing one of the nicest drives for the Sooners this season was that opening drive in the third quarter, in which they blended in a little bit of run. A little bit of pass, and of course, the trick plays as well were golden for the Sooners, especially the flea flicker, P. Ryan, goes back to Mayfield, and Mayfield took a little while for the ball to get there, but goes downfield and finds um, Mark Andrews, and then they cap off the drive with a touchdown to D.D. Westbrook, and I thought that was a pivotal moment, because remember, OU led by one at halftime, but then they increased the lead to eight points, and there was a pivotal moment in the third quarter, by the way, and Auburn fans, if you're watching this, I would kind of like your opinion on it. You remember when the Sooners led, and it was the late part of the third quarter, and you're thinking that Auburn, you know, down eight, having seen OU just miss a field goal the prior possession, it's fourth and one. Okay, fourth and less than a yard. And I know that Auburn's rushing attack wasn't at its best tonight, but in a situation like the um, like the Tigers were in, not knowing how many more possessions you were going to get and seeing how the OU offense was playing better, you surprised that Gus Malzahn went and punted? I mean, I thought I was watching Mike Gundy and OSU against OU all over again with that conservative call. In that situation, they called timeout, and then they decided to punt. I was a little surprised that we saw that happen, but it did. 
Um, but like I said, the Sooners in the second half turned out the lights, and this was a dominating performance. 35-19 may not really indicate the complete domination that the Sooners had from quarter two onward, and that was because of the late touchdown on the final play of the game that Auburn um, earned in order to make the final score more respectable. But a dominating performance by Bob Stoops, and by the way, the Sooners under Bob Stoops, 12 seasons in which OU has had at least 11 wins. And this one, Swedish Sugar, the Sooners deserved it, and it's their 10th win in a row. Um, and you you look at the final stats, the Sooners in the game, by the way, um, Joe Mixon had 100 yards rushing. The Sooners, as a team in the first half, had 80 yards rushing, but in the second half, about 140, so they did one heck of a job, um, OU did, in supplying their own ground attack, and then also they were effective through the air with about 300 yards passing. So it was a more balanced attack than Auburn had. Auburn, um, like I said, Petway got his yardage, but a lot of that occurred in the first half. So the Sooners, I said they would win this game because they could run and pass effectively as opposed to Auburn, who runs the ball great, but that's about it. And um, they were one-dimensional, the Tigers were. And when you look at it from the Sooners' Um, this defensive perspective, they held Auburn to under 200 yards rushing, far below Auburn's season average for running the ball. So before we break down the Sooners, um, as we get ready to wrap it up, uh, talk about Auburn real quick. I think the Tigers will be a factor next year. They return a lot of players on a pet way is coming back, and they might get an upgraded quarterback because now they have Jared Stenham. That's a guy that OU knows because two years ago, the Sooners, um, when they beat Baylor, Stenham still played well in that particular game in prime time. So Stidham does have the capability to make Auburn a, a better team as far as throwing. And Stidham, by the way, doesn't run too bad either. Um, but I do think that uh, Auburn will be a factor next year. Will they win the SEC? <laughs> no, because Alabama plays in the SEC. Come on. <laughs> um, for the Sooners, I think the chances of them repeating as Big 12 champions look pretty good. Um, even though we don't know what's going to happen with the running backs, I think P. Ryan most likely leaves. I think he's going to be high on a lot of people's draft boards, even though I know he's had recent injuries. Joe Mixon, is, I don't think it's going to be too high on people's draft boards, and that's, of course, because of the tape. You know, the tape involving Amelia Molitor, the hit that night at Pickleman's, that's going to resonate in a lot of NFL scouts' minds. Not that the NFL team won't take him, but I do think that, that Mixon will not be a high draft pick, so don't be surprised if you see Mixon um, come back for his uh, senior year. Not a guarantee, but right now, I think Mixon would come back. I don't think P. Ryan's going to. Um, it does look like um, Stephen Parker will be back for his senior year. Orlando Brown's going to be back for his uh, final year. And then also, too, you have the um, you have the likes of Baker Mayfield coming back for one more year. Big thing for the Sooners, though, you got to replace one heck of a linebacker in Jordan Evans. And then another thing, too, OU's going to need receivers. And this may, might mean Mark Andrews at tight end gets more looks. But right now, you got to have more receivers, um, obviously, um, you know, losing uh, Geno Lewis, who was the transfer from Penn State. And, of course, you lose one of the best receivers the school's ever had in D.D. Westbrook. Uh, there's no doubt that help at wide receiver is going to be required. And so far, the seniors do have a top five recruiting class coming in. So the future looks bright for Oklahoma. I'd say right now their biggest competition will be Oklahoma State, who returns nearly everybody. And I think those two teams will play twice. Regular season, early November in Stillwater, and then early, um, you know, a few weeks later in Arlington for the Big 12 championship game. So I think you'll see two matchups for uh, Bedlam, something we've never seen before. Um, looking at the future for the Sooners, their opener on September will be against UTEP. Second game will be at Ohio State. So circle that on your calendar. I'd like to thank all of you fans for watching throughout the season. Um, for Oklahoma Sooners fans, yeah, the season may not have resulted into a playoff season, but that didn't mean it wasn't successful. The Sooners, you know, made a little bit of amends for the one and two start and winning 10 in a row. So be proud of this team. They accomplished a lot and had to overcome a lot. And for the non OU Sooner fans, thank you for watching me throughout the season. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll come back in a few months, most likely, and do it all over again with our 2017 team by team college football previews. Um, thank you for watching me. And final score one more time Sooners dominate, especially in the second half, winning 35 to 19 and finishing 11 and 2, and another major bowl win for Bob Stoops.
Thanks for watching, and we'll do it again next year. Boom, sir.